Um, so welcome everyone. Um, you are here and in the right spot for our webinar today uh, on the tool for assessing effects of local intersectoral action. Uh, my name is Diane Oikel. I'm a knowledge translation specialist for the National Collaborating Centre for Determinants of Health. And um, it just dawned on me, I've, I was saying earlier that I've done a lot of webinars, but I think this is the first one that I've done with the video on. So um, I feel a little oddly vulnerable, more vulnerable than I have in previous months. Um, so welcome, welcome. Um, I would like to, uh, before we go any further, acknowledge that the National Collaborating Center for Determinants of Health is in Mi'kma'ki, which is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Um, and as well, I will go ahead and read the other loud acknowledgements. The National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools um, is hosted at McMaster University, and they are located on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations. And the National Collaborating Center for Public, Healthy Public Policy is on an age-old indigenous territory, place of meeting and diplomacy between peoples and the site of the signing of the Great Peace Treaty. And we thank the Mohawk Nation for their hospitality on this unceded territory. This webinar is a partnership of those three NCCs and we are collectively all very grateful to be on our indigenous lands. And because we all work nationally, we extend this thanks to um, all of the First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples and communities across this great country. Here are a few housekeeping issues. Um, this is a new webinar platform uh, called Big Marker. So um, we are um, working through a few user and usability challenges. Certainly if you have any technical issues, um, you can send a private message to the administration. You'll see them listed um, under participants as the National Clarity Center for Methods and Tools. Bandana is on that line and she can help us work through any technological challenges. And please, you know, use the chat box to post any questions that you have for the speakers. We will collect those questions, compile them and pose them during the, the question and answer period at the end of the webinar. Um, and also if you've got comments, if there are connections that you wish to make, if there are people online that you want to um, reach out to, please feel free to use the chat box for that as well. And we will have a few polling questions during the webinar um, to get a sense of who you are and, and uh, where you're coming from. And um, Sarah Blades wants to know how, you, how to be sure you're muted. Um, my understanding is that um, there is a red band um, across the top of the screen and there should be a microphone setting there um, that has a line through it. Um, but Bandana, if um, if I've missed any detail on that, maybe you can send Sarah a message to let her know to be sure. Um, and also, we'll here are the links to where the webinar will be posted on the National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools YouTube channel. Um, and the slides will be there for English and the French version of the webinar that we had yesterday. Um, here is a graphic describing where all of our NCCs are located. There are six of us across the country in different provinces, um, and uh, we all have a different focus. The, the website is nccph.ca, uh, where you can find out more information. Um, I've got a couple of comments here that um, people don't see the mute or video button. I don't see anyone else on video. So I think that piece is, is um, safe and I don't hear any background noise, but if I do, um, then uh, we'll note that. So here's our first polling question. Um, we're wondering, have you visited the NCC for Public Health website or website of any of our six individual NCCs in the past? Um, this, I think Vandana will pull up the polling question and um, this just gives us a sense of what um, what the knowledge of our audiences of, of our organizations. Bandana, can you can you pull up the uh, the poll? Is it coming? Uh, let's see. I don't know if anyone else. Bandana, I can't see if the poll is up or if it's been taken down, so I might need you to uh, send me a comment and help me out here. 
Oh, we are getting responses. It is open. Uh, okay. And I think the poll just closed. <laughs> so um, that's really helpful. Thank you very much for that. And if you said yes on that previous question, how many times have you used resources? So this is a, um, a, rough, a rough estimate of how often you might consult one or any of the NCCs for information. Okay, that's great. Bond enough, they're sl if they're slowing down, maybe we can um, close that one. And I will move to the next, oh, and I guess that's it. I guess we go right to our speakers. Um, and so with that, I will introduce um, the three speakers that we have online today to walk us through this really amazing tool. Our first speaker is Angèle Bilodeau. She is a researcher at uh, Canada Research Chair in Community Approaches and Health Inequalities at the University of Montreal and at the Interact Centre of the CIU SSS du Nord-Île de Montréal. Her research interests are those around intersectorality and partnership action, social innovation, interorganizational and public community collaborations, collaborative governments and inter integrated public policies and public action. And Marie-Pierre Saint-Louis is a research professional. Um, she works at the Canada Research Chair, sorry, in Community Approaches and Health Inequalities. She has extensive experiences supporting concerted action processes in social development and the fight against poverty. Working for several years with Angèle Bilodeau, Marie-Pierre participated in the development of the tool for assessing the effects of local intersectoral action. And that's the tool we're discussing today. That's a knowledge transfer tool developed in partnership with uh, local actors in the Montreal area. And Gillian Cranias works in community leadership, joint actor partnerships, equity and community planning. She has supported groups and networks across Ontario for more than 15 years. And um, she has a great profile on LinkedIn that will describe more of her uh, current and past work. And with that, ladies, I will say thank you very much. Um, merci beaucoup. Here is an overview of our webinar objectives. And uh, I think with that, I'm passing it over. Is that right, Julia? Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Merci. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am going to give a land acknowledgement on behalf of the three of us. We are living in different cities. Toronto and Montreal are in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississauga, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. And in that spirit, it's an honor to be here today. So uh, this is our webinar objectives. We are going to share an introduction to the tool, explore ways to use the tool, and then have questions and dialogue with you. And just to let you know, this webinar was offered in French yesterday without my presence. And I am here because I've worked closely with Agel on another tool, translation and sharing it with the Anglophone communities in Canada and abroad. And so really pleased to be here with both Angèle and Marie-Pierre and to play this role um, supporting uh, mo knowledge mobilization. And you're all a part of that. So quickly, there's a glossary we have um, just before we jump in, because we are talking about a different language context. It's very common in Quebec to hear people talking about the term actor um, when they're talking about different stakeholders or participants in an action or process in a collective action around the table, etc. So that's the term actor that you'll hear a lot. Uh, we also recognize that not every Anglophone uses the term intersectoral. So other common synonyms are things like cross-sector, multi-sector, multi-stakeholder. If you want to add any other ones, just throw them into the chat. That will be great. So 
Uh, we want to tell you about the production of the original French tool. Uh, this, the research behind the tool aimed to answer this question. What are the effects of local intersectoral action on living environments? And how are they produced? The methods that were used in the research, which is a university community collaboration, was multiple case studies of three neighborhood tables in Montreal from 2011 to 2016, as well as real-time documentation of the progress of those intersectoral action tables towards observable transformations in the living environments. Next, uh, the bottom part of this slide, we talk about the development of the tool. Basically, it was a multi-step process, starting with four workshops, then moving to prototyping and testing, then moving the tool online, and finally having a launch with Commune Agir uh, in 2019, October. Next slide. As you can see, um, and this is just a high level of who was contributed to the development of the tool, because as you heard, it was three different community neighborhood tables as well. So it was an academic community partnership. The research researchers with Angel leading are from the University of Montreal. The practitioners from Commune Agir, which is a Quebec organization with some parallels to the Tamarack Institute. And Tamarack was a uh, was the lead partner in translating this tool to English. And then the coalition Coalition des Tables du Quartier, which is an independent nonprofit coalition of neighborhood roundtables. So translating the tool in English, well, the French tool was launched in October 2019. And the next month, uh, Marie-Pierre and Angèle and others began working on the English translation. Um, so that was when I got involved was in that later step. And as I mentioned earlier, Tamarack is the lead partner for the English Canada knowledge mobilization. Translation was also a multi-step process, and that began with an initial translator by a professional translator, and then a meeting among bilingual experts on intersectoral action. So those were from Anglophone communities, people who were bilingual, as well, Marie-Pierre, Angel, others were, and the translator were present. Finally, a pretest was made with others from the Anglophone communities who were practitioners. And after final edits, the English tool was launched December of last year. So basically it was a one year process. Marie Pierre, would you like to tell us why you translated the tool to English? Um, yes, uh, following the launch in the French uh, neighborhood tables in uh, the West Island of Montreal, uh, who speak uh, mainly, not mainly, but speak also in English, uh, showed an interest in translation. So in November 2019, we hired the translator, translator and uh, like the production in French, uh, it was important for us to have a tool adapt to the use of practitioner. So we therefore worked with very closely with bilingual experts and practitioners. Yeah, thank you. And so then those of us who are outside Quebec are really happy that you did that and got funding for it. Um, so now we're moving to the next slide and Marie-Pierre will show an overview of what you find online at the same link that was just put into the chat box. Uh, thanks, uh, Gillian. Uh, we chose to organize the information into three models. Uh, each model has its function. So the first model aims to taking ownership of the foundation of the tool. The model two uh, aims to mapping the key events of the project and translating them into a chain of transitional outcomes. Uh, and the module three uh, aims to diagramming a project chain of transitional outcomes, uh, identifying what, uh, what has been learned and reinvest them into the action. So that's the three model you can find on the website. And if we go uh, deeper in the model one, uh, you will find uh, two um, or different uh, documents. Uh, it mainly includes a visual presentation in 
Prezi format with audio example from the experience of neighborhood tables in Montreal. Uh, you will also find documentation, mainly research uh, publication has been done on the, on the tool or on the transitional outcomes. And in that uh, model, uh, the theory behind the tool is explained. Uh, so, Gillian, could you explain the foundation of the tool? Ton micro, Gillian. Okay. There we go. We were told to use that one up there. I'm going to keep it handy. Sorry about that. Um, so the research findings, this is the first slide about the research findings, are that local intersectoral action in the area of social development leads to tangible material and social transformations in living environments. These transformations affect the availability and accessibility within living environments of resources that promote health and well-being. And these transformations correspond to local culture, history and needs. So Mary Pierre, you have an example too. So before we move on, Mary Pierre is going to share an example. Yes. Um, for example, in the intersectoral committee, the actors work together to improve a community food market. Uh, so they define a refrigerator, refrigerator <laughs> equipment, uh, succeed to ex extend open opening hours, and they developed the uh, cultural and educational program around the, the food market. Uh, this, this is what we think uh, of, this, this is what we think of when we talk about the tra tra tangible transformation in living environments. Okay, and the second area of research, the second big research finding, and this is where the tool comes up, is that there are 12 transitional outcomes that mark the progression of action towards its effect. So earlier they had looked at, and there's other research about those tangible outcomes. And then what's unique about this research was the identification of 12 transitional outcomes. And that's what the tool was built around. So this is central finding of the research. Um, and the tool allows us to use knowledge and the language of those transitional outcomes as reference points when we evaluate and also when we strategize. So what is a transitional outcome? It's an observable indication of action as it occurs, which is helpful for evaluation. And its transitional outcomes represent events that mark the progress of action towards its effects. As I mentioned earlier, a total of 12 transitional outcomes were identified and they relate to three areas or domain, domains of intersectoral action, which we're gonna look at now. So these are the three domains, network setup and governance. So within that, and in a moment, we'll see a whole slide of the outcome, transitional outcomes that match that domain and that area. Self-representing and influencing others and aligning necessary actors and resources. These are the kinds of areas that if you work in this field or you're a researcher in this field, you know, we recognize network creation and adoption of governance structures resolution of controversy. So I won't, uh, you can read them there, but we're going to go in more detail in a moment. You can see that they are grouped into areas of our work. Next slide is about the action, first action area, network setup and governance. Now you're going to get to hear from Angèle. And what we're going to do for this next series of slides is I will just read through each of the transitional outcomes. And then the ones that have stars are maybe not as obvious or there's a real theoretical piece behind that Angèle can help us illuminate and understand more deeply. So then we'll be turning to her for that. So in this area, network setup and governance, there's network creation, the establishment of linkages between heterogeneous social actors 
and non-human entities, knowledge, reports, policies, technologies, funding, including setting them into motion in projects. The second transitional outcome in this area is the adoption of network governance structures and rules, the adoption of methods for collective functioning within a network to regulate participation and decision-making process. And the third is the resolution of controversies, the identification and elaboration of solutions in the case of controversies that prevent actors from cooperating. So Angel, I pass it to you now to tell us more about the network creation first. Yeah, um, about uh, network creation. Um, first idea is that network creation is an ongoing uh, construction of uh, socio-technical uh, networks. Uh, we focus on uh, non-human entities because uh, network uh, network good action is not only uh, the will of social actors, but also uh, depends on all sorts of things in their environment that help uh, shaping the action. We think about uh, laws, policies, programs, uh, technology, uh, financing, uh, land, um, building, and uh, and so forth. So. Um, Create um, a socio-technical network means setting uh, social actors and uh, non-human entities into motion and uh, engaging them in a role. And uh, that is an, as a part of a, a collective project to, to achieve goals. So uh, socio-technical network are ongoing construction because during the process, uh, some social actors withdraw, some other uh, um, and non-human entities also uh, are added to the network. And uh, also with new rules or new knowledge so that they introduce new ideas, new strategies in the project. And this process, changes the course of action and also the network. And then socio-technical network and project influence uh, each other. And uh, now about uh, transitional out country resolution of controversies, just a few words about controversies. To say that uh, controversies, it is not just a disagreement uh, such as uh, about uh, fund uh, management or about uh, work organization. A controversy is a, a confrontation of uh, competing ideas in a, in a project on the same issue, the same question. And uh, it needs to be argued. It is an argued discussion on a situation, a phenomenon, a problem, or a course, the, the course of action. So uh, we can deal with uh, controversies. Network must deal with controversies. And uh, if they want to progress in, in action, we can deal with controversies by um, shifting uh, actors' position via deliberation or a confrontation of a different uh, position. So some actors shift their position also by adding uh, of relevant actors who introduce new knowledge or resources or by strengthening uh, certain ties, ties, les liens, ties mm -hmm. and uh, dropping others, some uh, actors with uh, withdrawal from the, 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 the network. And also by uh, developing a stronger solution, enabling, actor, enabling actors to improve their uh, cooperation. Thank you, Angel. I just saw Diane write, you can post questions in the chat so they will be gathering them for later. Okay. Uh, transitional outcomes in a nutshell, part two, action area about self-representing and influencing others. So under this action area, there's quite a few transitional outcomes. The production of intermediaries, which involves the expression of convergent ideas and positions, priorities, projects and solutions in material form, such as plans, reports, or briefs. 
There's also the placement of those same intermediaries, which is the introduction of intermediaries into other networks, to decision makers, to media, or other intermediaries, such as integrating one into a brief. And then there is number six, the activation of intermediaries, the promotion and use of intermediaries by strategic actors or networks. Number seven, representation by spokespersons, which are actions and statements to communicate positions, generate interest, or influence the position and commitment of other strategic actors or networks. And number eight, the strengthening of spokespersons and intermediaries, which involves reinforcement of the legitimacy and credibility of spokespersons and the intermediaries that they convey to ensure they are better recognized by the populations and groups on whose behalf they speak and taken into greater, greater consideration by strategic actors. Now, Angel is going to give us more detail again, those two that have the stars, starting with the production of intermediaries. No, I will begin by spokesperson. <laughs> okay, starting at number seven. Because we need Thank to you. talk about spokesperson before to talk about intermediaries after. <laughs> so, spokesperson um, represent and speak on behalf of a collaborative uh, group. Um, Without spokesperson, the network cannot exist in public space. Um, spokesperson are the, the integral part of what makes a, a collaborative uh, groups uh, exist, endure, and or decline. So, spokesperson, um, their strength is based on two two element, uh, elements: their legitimacy and their credibility. Uh, legitimacy um, arises from the social position they occupy. Uh, and this position confers them recognition by others, such as uh, a coordinator of uh, an intersectoral body. Uh, the credibility of a spokesperson is uh, granted to them by, by others, by the value that others place on the information they convey and their mediation, mediation skills. So, um, spokesperson use a, a variety of tools to contribute to their representation. And these tools uh, are um, that we call intermediaries because these tools act as intermediaries between the actors in the, the network and out the network. So intermediaries are uh, material or virtual tools, such as plans, reports, briefs, that gather and present uh, the shared ideas uh, of the, the network. Um, so these intermediaries communicate these ideas to other uh, actors or networks uh, um, to which they want to, to talk, to address. So um, these intermediaries materialize collaboration because uh, they, they, they circulate among actors, putting them, them in contact. They materialize actors' ideas and projects. They stabilize agreement when the project is written, this uh, project is more stable. And um, these intermediaries connect uh, internal uh, network, actor in, in internal network with other actor extern external. So uh, as we say before, uh, in intermediaries are produced. They are placed into uh, other network or decision makers and they are activated and used by other um, outside the initial network. It is the way uh, by which the, the, the project is progressing. Beautiful. It's such a beautiful narrative of some of our experiences. Okay, um, so now we're moving to the third action area aligning necessary actors and resources. And there's four transitional outcomes related to this area. 
Number nine, the alignment of interests, movement of actors is the convergence of interests, position shifts, engagement of actors in new roles, transformations in power relationships that together promote collective action. Number 10, resource acquisition is about the harnessing of necessary resources, funding, labor, expertise, and technical support for the network's operation and achievement of its goals. Number 11, the expansion of and strengthening of networks and their projects is the recruitment of new actors, addition of non-human entities, strengthening relationships within a network or between networks, strengthening or expansion of the projects supported by those networks. And number 12, commitment of decision makers in achieving change. Commitment of actors holding the reins of decision making and action, whether inside or outside a network. Pass it back to Angel. Yeah, just uh, some words about uh, alignment, uh, alignment of interest that is done by movement of actors. Uh, the basic idea is that there is no possible progress uh, in the collective action if all actors of a network remain in the same position. So, uh, movement of actors are accomplished by uh, the negotiation of uh, mutual concessions, uh, often, uh, often with the help of a mediator. Um, also by uh, learning through the exchange of ideas and uh, the confrontation of viewpoints. So this uh, interaction and mediation makes actors uh, first uh, converging toward collective problem definition and problem solving, two, uh, negotiating uh, shared uh, interest, three, uh, engaging in new roles, and four, uh, mobilizing a critical mass of actors in a, a common project. So, uh, actor movement are managed by mediators, and the mediators are uh, social actors uh, whose action transform networks. It's a really important role in the network. Their work creates new connection, uh, that lead to change in the in the network and their project. They also help to to solve uh, uh, controversies. Ali. Thank you. Okay, so now we've taken the tour of all of those twelve, and I'm going to pass the mic to Marie Pierre, who's taking us now through the tool, um, the practical side. Uh, thanks, uh, module uh, the module two uh, includes uh, itself a facilitator guide that allows to identify the major events of the project, but also to link those events to the 12 transitional outcomes. It also includes uh, tradi uh, additional documents uh, which facilitate the realization of the workshop. For instance, uh, you will find an invitation letter and some facilitation material within. In the facilitator guide, there is an agenda proposal to draw the missing events of the project and to link them to the transitional outcome, uh, outcomes. In, model, uh, in the step two, like you can see, we suggest that the group take a moment to, to look at the foundation of, of the tools and became, uh, become familiar with the ter terms uh, used, like, for example, the transitional outcomes. Before the meeting, the coordinator or the coordinating committee will have to identify some significant events to facilitate the workshop. So the third step like you can see in the agenda, uh, aims to validate and improve the project story. After identifying the most significant events, uh, all the group together, the workshop participant will link those events uh, to uh, the transitional outcomes in step four. So 
Here, an example of the workshop. Like I said before, there is prepar preparatory work before the workshop, such uh, as putting together a banner with the, the highlights of the project. So all the significant event, uh, a first uh, a line of the significant event, like you can see uh, uh, in the photo on top. At the workshop, uh, uh, the, the, the banner will be completed, uh, so the story will be completed and link to the event, uh, link the event to the uh, transition, transitional outcomes, like you can see in the second uh, picture. Model two. Uh, aimed to gain an over overall view of the project impact and to capture learning in order to reinvest them in action. So it includes three documents. The first one, it's a timeline a template. Uh, the, there's also a diagram and a question grid. Let's see them in, uh, in details. So the timeline, uh, it, it's a document, an Excel documents, uh, document, and it makes, uh, makes it possible to keep track and to transcribe the project story in the table form. So the colum columns are year, month, event, event uh, events and paths. And uh, there's two uh, columns for transitional outcomes uh, because some st sometimes uh, there are more than one uh, that can be in the, in the identified to uh, an event. Here's the diagram. Uh, so on the other hand, uh, this is the product of the research. Uh, so it, it, it did, it did uh, exist uh, before, like we did the tool. Uh, this their diagram uh, was presented at the end of uh, each, every case study during the research. Uh, and this template uh, can be completed to capture a chain of transitional outcomes on a single page. In each of the ovals, uh, there's a transitional outcomes uh, who's, uh, who's written. One comes to append the event of the, uh, of the transitional outcomes uh, so as to reconduct, reconduct uh, the chain of transitional outcomes. Here an example of a complete diagram. It shows a project for modif modifying bus service in a remote uh, neighborhood in Montreal. So first of all, uh, the community inter intersectoral com uh, community intersectoral committee held a forum on local social development to identify priorities for local action, which result in a document of strategic directions. Uh, so thank you, Gillian, for the narrow. So as transitional outcomes, they have a product and intermediary, like you can see on the uh, diagram. To achieve those objectives includes in uh, the document, the, doc, the committee set up a subcommittee for access uh, the fruit and vegetables, so event number two. So as a transitional outcomes, they created a, a network. And so on until number nine, when the city transit uh, com commission committed to changing the number 30 bus route, so event nine, which is associated with the following transitional uh, event. Yeah, the, the second narrow <laughs> with the following transitional outcomes like outcome, a uh, commitment of decision makers in achieving change. This is, uh, this example can be found online uh, in module two with uh, a narration of uh, all the story of the project. In module 
to three, there is also a grid of questions that allow uh, learning lessons from the action, so retrospective insight, and to invest the learning in action, so prospective insight. There is also a question that relate to each of the transitional outcomes. Uh, uh, it helps to understand how each transitional outcomes has been uh, mod uh, mobilized uh, to achieve effects and to think avenues to better use them in order to achieve uh, the expected uh, objective in, uh, in the future. As it is, it is uh, thought out in the, in the tool, uh, it can be the subject of a second workshop in order to take a reflective look at the diagram. However, actors who have uh, used the tool so far find a great interest in the grid. For, uh, for some, they even use the grid, uh, the grid uh, to, uh, as a gateway uh, to experimenting with the tool uh, and observing that the transitional outcome is not mobilized, uh, they will refer to the they, they, they did refer to the theory in the module one after. So uh, that grid has been uh, used uh, uh, as a start to look at the tool uh, for some uh, some community. The tool is, a, like you can see, the tool is a proposal for process based on theoretical uh, knowledge to assess the effect of intersectoral inter action. But it can be used other ways. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, Sonia Racine uh, from Comnagir uh, used the tool but she decided to produce uh, another kind of diagram, like you can see uh, on the, on the, on the diapo. Here's another example. In the Montreal neighborhood table, I use transitional outcomes to monitor an action and we represent the result uh, in the form of a Socratic wheel. A uh, point in the cl uh, closer from the middle represent the transitional outcomes who were the least mobilized. Uh, it is important to understand, though, that action to achieve result doesn't need to mobilize all transitional outcomes. But this visual make it easy to see the strengths and the weaknesses and to open up a dialogue to find promising avenues to achieve the desired effects. So, uh, Gillian, uh, uh, can you uh, keep going on the la almost last slide? Yes, I will. Thank you. That was really great. And sorry, again, my mute button. I had done something to draw those arrows and then I had lost my mute button. This is our final uh, slide and just want to do a summary here. Um, Angel, if you could speak to, uh, you know, when are the times that we can use a tool? And this reflects very much that practical side that's already coming out in the chat that we're going to talk about more. But in summary, um, when do we use this tool? To it on me. Yeah. Why? Hmm. I cannot hear uh, Angel, can you? No, I can't. Yeah, I should have asked. My you. phone was not open. <laughs> oh, so, it said that it was, but here we go. Great. Yeah, I, I, I am just telling that the tool may be used at any moment during the project. At each time you want to do an evaluation or a planning exercise. Uh, if we want to, to reflect on the what have we, have we done now, um, we can see if uh, there is too many repetition of the same uh, transitional outcome, or uh, is there some uh, transitional outcome uh, absent in our chain? And uh, for example, 
uh, producing uh, intermediaries. If we just produce intermediaries and uh, we, we don't do anything with them, so it is not really useful to progress in the action. Uh, so uh, if, we, if you, you don't do representation um, toward uh, strategic actors, uh, you you uh, you have no chance to have a strategic uh, uh, les appuis. Um, how support. do you say? Mm -hmm. hmm? Support. Support. Yeah. Mobilizing. So the... um, it is uh, the, the the same way for uh, strategic uh, uh, prospective analysis. If you if you ask us, if you ask in the the network, what is your uh, need for formation? Uh, for training so uh, maybe you will think that uh, you are not uh, it is not for you easy to to talk with uh, um, les élus elected officials yeah so you will maybe will think it is good to to take formation about what is the the, the role of these people and maybe how you can talk to them so you, you can use the 12 uh, transitional outcome to ask you some question about your uh, your chain of action you have done now. Yeah, so all that we plan. Next, it, it informs the next strategic cycle. And uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, we were talking earlier um, and we were thinking of metaphors and I think this one was okayed by Angel. <laughs> And I was, that it's like you have these cards, 12 cards that you can play and you can play them several times yeah. or one or two times. And maybe one of them you will never play, but generally looking, oh, are we missing any of them? Like these are our resources in the context of this kind of work. And so it's that touch point and, uh, and uh, it's, it's wonderful. And for me, the fact that it's based on this collaborative research with the academic rigor and the community, you know, validity uh, makes yeah. it really and, powerful. Uh, but, mm -hmm. Using these 12 uh, transitional outcomes, you are sure that you have uh, all the keys uh, you need to, to make a progress in your action because it is all these 12 we, we, we found in many case study of practices. So you may be sure that among these 12 tools, you will find what you need to, to make your action. Thank you. We're, thank you, Angel and Marie-Pierre. We're moving it back the moderating to Diane, who's going to take us into some more good discussion. Oh, this is really great. Thank you very much to all of you. Merci beaucoup. Um, we do have a few questions, actually, and a few really interesting ones. So um, I'll go right to it. There was a question around transitional outcomes, and this was this was asked at the beginning before you described it fully. But maybe we'll we'll so it might be already answered, um, but we'll ask it again anyway. So why are those outcomes called transitional? Why is that um, the label for them? Why the word transitional was used? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it, because it is a transition. We go from a point to another point before uh, arriving to the end of the, the chain, at the end of the project, that is a, a real transformation in the living environment. So to arrive there, you have to, to, to make transition. It is why we use the, this term transitional outcome. Right. Is it because it's 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 process oriented? Yeah. So when I heard it, I thought because it looks at the process and not just the output or the, the product at the end, right? It's a yeah. process focus. Yeah. But okay. it is a process oriented to effect. You know, it is right. not just studying the process. We have right. before studied the process uh, a partnership in uh, other studies, but now it is just taking the process what is useful to to enlighten effects. Okay. Yeah, okay. if I can speak to that, because I work with Angel yeah. on translating the process tool to English, which I will put the link in later. Um, I think what's exciting about this tool is often uh, when we work on projects, all that, the, the work often, the early work, 
we've we've been working on a lot of transitional outcomes and off and it's possible that outsiders or funders aren't able to see where's the tangible and this makes that work <laughs> tangible um so yeah. it's transitional in that way but it is also an outcome towards the larger goals it's so hard to evaluate or to assess that part of of intersectoral work. I commented in the chat box on that, that it's, and we hear that a lot from the field, that it's very difficult to um, assess the impact of something if there is no um, uh, tangible outcome. So so there's, there's real importance in this. There was another question related to transitional outcomes. So how do we know which transitional outcome has been attained? Is there a module or a checklist? Could you, how do you? Could, could, is there a is there a, a checklist um, to assess um, how the how the transitional outcome has been has been attained? Yeah. Um, so the grid uh, we we built uh, make this job. Uh, because okay. uh, the grid includes many questions um, proposed, question proposed to, to be used to to uh, to ask us uh, um, at what degrees do we have we used this uh, this transitional outcomes, um, and uh, can we make more with this? Um, but it is always. Uh, uh, a collective decision about each uh, transitional outcome. Uh, the group can uh, consider today that uh, um, spokesperson are good, and uh, maybe one year after, uh, I've seen that uh, uh, maybe uh, they they have to to reinforce it. Uh, there is not a, one true uh, solution. There is not a good and a bad answer. <laughs> yeah. It is just uh, the collective decision about the diagnostic we, we can make on our project and one point. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if, if, I can, if I can add, the grid doesn't look uh, this uh, like this in the, on the website. So I'm going to put uh, the link in the chat uh, right now like this uh, you can have a, a quick view that's great thank you thank you merci um, there was one more question about the transitional outcomes <coughs> and that was around using them to measure the impact of the project um, can you do that can you use the transitional outcome to measure the impact yeah if the impact of a project is uh, transformation, um, is the transformation of living environment, so uh, we can make the, the chain of all the significant action we made uh, to have this transformation and uh, collective impact. Uh, it's a program to 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 reach a transformation in the living environment, but uh, it can make also for any uh, effects we want to monitor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the indicators um, that are chosen. Um, les indicateurs. Uh, si vous choisissez, um, that tell us, um, you know, what um, what the impact has been. Um, yeah. So I think choose. just just to make a, a, a difference between um, this uh, transitional outcomes and uh, with a, make a dashboard with the 12 and transitional outcomes and make a dashboard like a logic model. If you have a, a logic model, you have no reference to, to, to make your reflection. You have just all you have done. If you use transitional outcomes, you will have your chain of events and you will have a reference 
which include this theory of 12 transitional outcomes uh, useful to, to, uh, to, to, to progressing in action. Um, we just have a couple of minutes. I'll get to a couple more questions. Um, there was a comment about um, that there's sometimes a sense of competition in the nonprofit sector because organizations are working on a, uh, a similar need or a similar issue. And um, has the research looked at how to address the sense of threat um, or that sense of competition? Between organizations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a, an easy question because uh, mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. Marie-Pierre, est-ce que tu, tu as vécu dans des expériences où c'était présent? Uh, yes, there's al always... Uh, not always, but uh, it's often that we can see those kind of dyna dynamic. But the mm -hmm. numbers, um, uh, I will just go come back to show you. Uh, the first area of uh, transitional outcomes, uh, when you look at them, it, uh, it gives us like a guide to um, ask us question all like uh, who's part of my network uh which kind of roles should we have together and do we have con uh, controversy and should we talk about them so and when you look at those uh, three um, uh, transition outcomes it uh, it, it helps to see that that, uh, that conflict who can who's uh, seen like um, badly at first uh, see it as something like a uh, uh, positive a way to find like a solution or find like a, a strength to uh, move forwards uh, or to the objective so uh, i would say that those three uh, transitional outcomes uh, when we look at the the, the grid uh, those question makes you ask like how do we manage the the the, the, the partnership and also uh, angel has uh, worked on other like uh, another tool who gave us like more um, answer of on those issues about like uh, power and like uh, um, partnership yes angel yeah, I, I would like to just add another idea about that. If we go on the third uh, group of uh, transitional outcome, uh, number 11, um, it, mm -hmm. during the, in the case studies, we often saw uh, some situation of, uh, uh, it was not expansion, it was uh, uh, affaiblissement. How do you say? Um, Weak, weakness. Yeah, yeah. When the when the, the network lose some people, some social actors, you are going away in another mm. competing uh, network. So mm. there is competition about a project, and somebody, some actors are going away, and they think they will uh, have a better gain in another network. So. In the first one, in the the first uh, network, there is uh, we lost some uh, strategic actors. So we find this find we find this sort of competition. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. and we have all we need in the, the the transitional outcome to to mark that in the the following of the project. Uh, we have not here. Uh, on this slide, um, but we have now 11 A and B, and B is the last, and A is the, the strengthening. Je pense que c'est clair. Oui, 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 c'est bon. Uh, unfortunately, we are at our time. We um, 
need to close things out. I'm going to skip forward a few slides here so we can, um, we do have a couple of quick polling questions if folks have a moment to um, help us out with gathering some data and some evaluation. Um, and while, well, actually I'll, I'll go ahead. Please let us know, um, did the webinar increase your knowledge and understanding of the tool? Um, I'll just leave that for a second. And uh, while folks are responding here, um, I'll just um, say a really big thank you, merci beaucoup to all of our speakers. Um, I attended the French version of the webinar yesterday and uh, I am proud to say I, I got mo I understood most of it and it was consistent with today, but um, it was really good actually to, to watch this twice because I picked up on different things. So I would encourage people to watch the recording to pick up on more. Um, I'll ask people to do the next poll. Um, I will use the tool or method from today's webinar in my own practice. Um, this helps us to assess um, if there will be pickup or impact from being presented today. Um, okay, and I will go to the next one. Um, which of the following statements apply to your experience with the webinar? And, you know, to reassure, as folks are responding to reassure, we do really use these responses um, after the webinar to help plan future events and to help change our strategy for how um, we facilitate. This one in particular had three different NCCs involved, and so um, we've each had a different job with that. So the facilitation is um, really important, and how it all went is, is also really important. Uh, and would you recommend it to others? Okay, and I think there's just one more. Uh, how did you hear about uh, the event? I know Bamna's in the background putting these polls up. I hope I'm not going too fast. <laughs> um, there is a, there is a uh, question um, in the chat box. Where do we send feedback once they start using the tool? Maybe I can ask um, Julia or Angela or Marie-Pierre to to let folks know where can they get in touch with feedback um, after they've started using it. Um, on the tool, uh, on the website, you will find uh, the, the, the address, like uh, email address of uh, the LACASIS, uh, uh, and you can uh, send, uh, uh, send us your experience and uh, uh, share with us uh, what went great or what went wrong or ask us questions we're going to be happy to hear from you yeah great great uh and with that our last slide is uh just webinars and we are now quite a bit over so i'm going to say thank you very much thank you to all of our participants we had nine provinces and one territory online that we know of and uh four different countries outside of Canada. So uh, what a great reach and what great participation. And um, thank you very much to everyone for joining us and um, to our speakers for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir.